Welcome to today's video where we're going to be taking a look at this secure S60 soldering station. Now this one's a little bit different than some of the other handheld ones. As you can see, it uses the JBC uh, C210 style tip. This is a genuine one that I uh, was just testing in it. Uh, however, they do come with uh, some clone ones when you order it. In this video, we'll take a look at the operation of the soldering iron, kind of how it, how it looks and feels in the hand, and then also actually take a deeper look at those uh, tips and how to calibrate to use a genuine tip. If you didn't already see my YouTube short, I did do a YouTube short about those clone tips. Uh, just to give you an idea of why we would want to be calibrating. So definitely try to stick with us for the full video so that way not only do you get that idea of how this product really looks and feels, but also how you would calibrate it if you want to use uh, genuine tips with it. But yeah, let's uh, dive into this and take a good look at it. Okay, so let's open this up and then we can also open up the uh, SIO 12 that they sent me a while ago. So this one's the S60 that we're reviewing in today's video. And as you can see, it comes with the soldering iron, the power bricks, so that way you can use it, and three different tips. We have a uh, J tip, a conical, and a knife tip. Go ahead and put a tip in it, so that way we can compare it to the um, TS100 style one that they have. So there we go. So that's with the tip installed. And then this is the older one that they had, the uh, SIO uh, 12. It will receive the same style tips as the um, TS100, but also just a, rec a regular Hako T12 will go in there. So as you can see, the tip to grip is not nearly as ideal on this as it is with uh, this tip. Uh, that's the same with a regular hacko though. Like the regular hacko, you, you, you get a little bit more grip on it than you do uh, with one of these. And this is about the same tip to grip you get on the uh, T12 handles. Uh, and this is like identical tip to grip to a genuine uh, JBC. So, I'm really excited about this one because it uses uh, JBC style tips. Yeah, I mean, the tips that they send with them, uh, they're not branded. They don't have the JBC writing on it. So clearly they're a clone tip that uh, will work with it. But I do want to check and see, will, uh, will a genuine tip work in here? And uh, will one of these tips work in a genuine uh, uh, JBC piece of equipment? But yeah, uh, first impression here without even turning it on yet. Uh, huge improvement over the T12 style one. So if you remember from this one, if you want to use the TS100s, you just unscrew the two little um, springs there and move them up here uh, to accept that. But yeah, I I feel like kind of the best way to use this is with a with a T12, uh, mostly because you can use genuine Hacko tips. And one of the things that really make these cartridge style soldering irons good are those genuine tips. Um, so I, I'm a huge fan of, you know, having whatever you want to run it, but actually use the, the genuine tips on there. Uh, those those T T12 stations, these TS100 style irons. This one is that SIO 12 Pro. One of the differences in this and this one is that you can only use USB-C here while this one has that barrel jack as well. And this one is 12 volts max on the input of that. So we'll go ahead and use the supplied um, USB-C and power it up. All right, and if it works anything like the other one, you have to hold down a button to start it and then you can use the two buttons to change the temperature. Um, so yeah, it has that nice little OLED screen, shows its uh, input voltage, says that it's in stop mode and what its set temperature is. So let's go ahead and move that. Yep, so you press up or down uh, to uh, change the set point. So we have it set at 300. Let's go ahead and set it to 350. And then to start it, it should be holding down this button if it works the same. Yep, we're now in work mode. Uh, so it does work the same as the 
other ones, let's get some solder here. And this is a little bit big solder for the tip that we're using, but let's see here. Oh yeah, that works great. Uh, definitely has some contaminate on there, probably some oil to uh, protect it while it's in shipping. Prevent oxidation or something. But yeah, let's uh, burn off that contaminant and get this. Enough. I put the knife tip on here because I actually like using these on pin headers. They work good for drag soldering, uh, desoldering, and uh, just kind of going across pin headers because you can get more than one pin at a time. Uh, so that is why I chose the knife tip for this. Uh, you won't see me use a conical tip very often, maybe to put two wires together, but the knife tip, the J hook, and uh, a, um, a hoof tip like this are some of my favorites. I also do like the wedge tip as well. One thing, when you're soldering headers on and using one of these perf boards like this, make sure you like Pick a perf board that you don't like too much because that heat is kind of bad for them. Okay, so we got a little bit of flux on there. Let's go ahead and turn back on the soldering iron. All right. All right, well, I want to compare a genuine tip to uh, one of the ones that came with it. Uh, so this is the uh, tip that we're going to be testing with. And let's we'll go ahead and turn it on. We're set to 350. So it's in work mode. And so we overshot a little bit. Definitely creeping down now in temperature. So... Yeah, I mean, it's not terrible. It It is definitely a little bit low there. We're at uh, about 325 instead of the 350 that we're set to. So definitely see a good bit of bouncing, but also, um, yeah, now that it's decided that it's up to temperature, that uh, three about 325 is where it load goes to with a uh, genuine tip in there. So let's turn that off and switch back to the tip that it shipped with and see how they compare. And that's right on 350. So their calibration may be just a smidge high. So I'm getting what 355 there instead of 350. So pretty close with the uh, ones that it ships with. Definitely closer with the ones that it ships with them with a genuine tip. Um, and if you saw my YouTube short, I know that these ones run way hot uh, inside the actual JBC uh, station. So we know that the tips that are shipping with these don't work quite uh, well. They not necessarily don't work, but just the temperature sensor in there is definitely uh, nonlinear and different than the uh, a genuine JBC. So let's actually calibrate this thing to work with a uh, genuine JBC instead. Okay, so to calibrate it, we're gonna hold down this button, all right? And then now we can move to calibrate and then hold down that button again. And then you go through these different settings here and you can program it. So the way it works is um, hold down that button and okay now it'll set this to 60 degrees C uh, this doesn't really work that great down at that low temperature um, so we are a bit high there so now we can set this higher to let it know that at that lower temperature there it's pretty inaccurate so 
Let's uh, check that. It's probably close to that. Yeah, we'll say 85. Um, so then, oops. So then after you pick your number, you click this button, both buttons at the same time to get out of the mode, and then come down here and then hit next. So next is 255. So let's go ahead and tell it to start this one. And we're uh, a little bit higher than 255, we're closer to uh, 260. And again, hold both buttons down and go to next. So, and hold the button down right there and then it starts it again. Yep, right on 398. I've already done the calibration once, which is why it was so close. This one is, is hotter than my uh, calibration can be set to, so I didn't actually calibrate this highest end of the temperature. And on top of that, I would never run my tips uh, that hot. So I went ahead and just skipped that one and saved it. So there we go. So now it's calibrated. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and check it one more time. All right, and we are right on the money at 350, which is what we are set to for running. So uh, yeah, so as you can see, the calibration did work. So you can calibrate this tool to a genuine uh, JBC tip. I have never had to calibrate my, um, my genuine JBC station, so I know their tips. Uh, uh, really don't have much variation from one to the other. So I rather just calibrate to the JVC tip and use uh, JVC tips than uh, to buy these cheaper ch tips and have to calibrate pretty regularly to keep up with the uh, variation from each one. Because there is a little bit of variation from each one, plus uh, you definitely have a lot of variation from manufacturer to manufacturer, which is exactly what... Um, Secure said when I talked to them about it, they said, yeah, they, they're aware of this, that the, uh, the ones that it came with do vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, um, and that they calibrate it to what's shipped with it. So that is something to be aware of, is if you want to use uh, genuine tips, you're going to need something like this. It doesn't have to be the JBC uh, calibration tool. There are other ones that you can buy. There's much cheaper ones you can get off of um, uh, eBay, or you can just use, you know, a regular like T or K type um, thermal couple. I think you would need K type. I believe uh, this gets a little too hot for T type thermal couples. But um, yeah, you know, anything like that you could use to be able to calibrate these and. Um, and be able to use genuine tips. Okay, so well, first of all, thank you to Secure for sending this out for review. Uh, I definitely am a fan this of This portable soldering iron is definitely something that I'm gonna keep around because I mostly use JBC equipment in the first place. I do have some Hacko stuff, but I, I much prefer JBC. I, I like the tips better. I like that tip to grip. Uh, and the fit and finish of this thing's really nice. Uh, it is a lot nicer than um, most of the other uh, handheld soldering irons that uh, I've tried out. Uh, I probably will do a giveaway in the future on the Secure S10 that I have. Uh, I just, um, I, I don't have a need for two different portable soldering irons. So this one, I may do a, a giveaway on the channel. Uh, but first, there's some people I know locally that I'm gonna ask if they want it uh, before going that route. Uh, the three 
clone tips that came with it. If anybody's watching this video and wants them, uh, just uh, shoot me an email. My uh, email address, you can find it on the about section of it. Uh, pay shipping and they're yours because I calibrated to use genuine tips. I already have a lot of genuine tips around. So I definitely, I don't need these. So I figured if anybody wants to pay the couple of dollars it would cost to throw them in an envelope and have them, then uh, they are yours. But yeah, I hope you liked the video. I hope you liked the review. Um, I know it may have been a little bit long-winded showing the calibration process, but I really wanted to show uh, how how to do that so that way um, so that way you could upgrade to the to those better tips because really what makes or breaks uh, one of these types of soldering stations is the the tip that you're using. As long as you can put enough power into the tip then it's it's a matter of just actually having a good tip um, because a lot of the clones what they do is the the elements actually further down in the tip because it's hard to get a smaller element that goes all the way up so if you if you ever like take a cut uh, of one of those t12s a lot of the clones the the heating element inside it really doesn't go all the way up to the to the very tip of it. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of my mentality uh, of why you should use uh, genuine tips, uh, even if you're using like a clone station. I don't know if I had to find anything to uh, complain about, it's that they didn't put the barrel jack on it, uh, but that was probably to keep this uh, smaller, sleek size. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan, I like it. Uh, it and like I said, it's, it's definitely something I'm going to keep uh, for uh, for when I need to take a soldering iron to go. Uh, at my bench, I'm pretty well set up, um, but these things really, you can use them as your dedicated bench soldering iron. There's no reason why you can't. Uh, they'll deliver the, you know, roughly 30 watts that uh, one of these uses. I, I believe this is a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, c 210s like 34. Five watts or maybe 45 watts. They're, they're relatively low power uh, in comparison to some of the uh, larger tips. So um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't think of anything to complain about other than, like I said, barrel jack, but I'm sure that's intentional. Uh, and I definitely uh, think that the case that these come in is a whole lot nicer than the, uh, like, uh, I don't know, the camera case that the older ones came in. So I think Secure has definitely been going in the right direction, their products. Uh, I knew that their main market is the uh, handheld uh, electric screwdriver and these uh, little handheld soldering stations. So definitely a brand and a product uh, that uh, definitely gets a recommendation from me. So yeah, I hope you guys liked the video and I'll uh, see you in the next one.